The original definition of rapid sequence integration, okay, the main part of it was to not give positive pressure ventilation. Okay, so in a true rapid sequence intubation, you are not bag masking. All right, you are giving passive flow. You're giving your drugs. You're you're finding your airway and you're putting the tube in. Do we do that? Okay. But what happened was, usually the only time that that is really done is like in a trauma room. Okay, you know when the kids come in and. You know, that is the, the usual situation, or out in the field. So, I mean, most of the time when we do it, it's called, it's really a modified rapid sequence. But since so few people ever do a true rapid sequence intubation, that kind of got dropped off, and, and instead everybody started invoking rapid sequence intubation when it's really not, okay? So that's nice and confusing. Okay, so, you know, I don't even know what to do with this term anymore for that reason, all right? But, so we can call it whatever, modified rapid sequence, or, all right? Because we really and truly the true rapid sequence, nobody really does that, right? Okay, so, now, whenever we do a procedure of any kind, right, what do we need to, what do we have to have before we can do a procedure? A medical indication. Okay. All right, so first we need a proper indication. Okay. What else should you know? If you're going to do something to a person, what else should you know about them? Allergies. Well, you're, you're going to do a procedure, so you want you're going to do something. So in order to do it safely, what other knowledge should you know besides just how to do it? I'll be experienced in doing it. Okay. All right. All right. Risks. All right. Right. If you're going to do something to someone, then you need to know the potential problems of doing that thing, whatever it is. All right. And. What else does knowing the risks let you do, hopefully? Prepare for the risks. Okay. Okay. Or avoid them, right? If you know what the risks are and there's certain things you can do to prevent it, all right? Then it's even better, all right? And then lastly, if you know that there's a particular risk, then you should know how to treat that risk or you shouldn't be doing the procedure, right? Okay. All right, so what are the proper indications, and you'll better all get this right really fast, um, for intubation? Severe head injury. Come on. Respiratory failure or, 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 or <laughs> inability of the patient to maintain airway. Okay, that's the third one. <laughs> you guys, that's what oxygen is. Thank you.